uh, journalism everywhere. You can't have big teams everywhere. So when something happens, you just dispatch a reporter to come. After Some, the incident. Yeah, uh, but this is how media work, really. Mm. You, and you can't change it. What you can do, and I think the Egyptians did it very well this time, is just to be very loud that we don't like the coverage. There are some mistakes. Mm. You need to correct this. And there are so many mechanisms when known how to do it. But again, with this, with mm. um, you need a better strategy to talk to the media, as I said. You need also to know how to talk to the media and the foreign audience, and not all the time to carry on this emotional uh, discourse and mm. uh, words and so on, which mm. completely are disconnected from mm. any audience anywhere. Mm. But I, I, I totally agree with you. Some of mm -hmm. them uh, are uh, are familiar with the, the Middle East and the problems of the Middle East. So they come when there are uh, mm. some events to cover and so on, and they have the knowledge and the background. Other, they don't have it, and they report according to their mm. reading. It's mm. all. Uh, it's like the all this controversy about mm. uh, is that a coup or not a coup? Mm. A coup for anyone when he sees uh, a military there, mm. the army taking over. So it's a coup. Mm. This is how we see it everywhere. So, but going into the complexity of the the story, mm. it's very difficult, and you need a lot of work. And seeing 30 million people on the streets is not <laughs> also. I think it was reported. This was completely reported mm. uh, as well. But how to put it in the context? Mm. And we, we shouldn't also forget that mm. for any reporter, those who were in Rabah or in Nahda were also Egyptians. Mm. So why but should but I but ignore them? We have them? To, uh, to say here that the masses who went to the street on the 30th of June were a larger uh, and bigger amounts, of course, than uh, what um, uh, we have seen in the Nahda and uh, in Rabah al-Adawi as well. And but uh, they were sit mm. in for long days also. Mm. And this is the image which anyone mm. from outside will see. It. These people were, mm. were staying there uh, days and nights and they believed in what they, they were staying for. So uh, it's again, mm. b because we are so close to the story, we don't mm. see it mm. uh, in its complexity mm -hmm. but someone who is coming from outside he is not emotionally related to the mm -hmm. story and for him he needs to reflect mm -hmm. again different views mm -hmm. um, w what I say always that we shouldn't be afraid of reflecting different views mm -hmm. if we are um, clever enough mm -hmm. and we have strong uh, uh, views and we can demonstrate that we are right, we shouldn't uh, be afraid of. Simply because this different view will find always a way to be heard. Mm. Uh, we, we have the experience, it's very interesting uh, how the Muslim Brotherhood were trying to, to uh, have their voice uh, heard, heard outside. Mm. So when uh, the TV channels were closed down, they immediately launched others mm. and then they used their they allies used channels, you have to uh, absolutely yeah, well. and yeah. they used very very uh, effectively uh, the social media mm. twitter uh, mm. especially twitter mm. and they were very very clever in using this so you can't now with mm. the modern media you can't shut down any mm. voice you can't of shut up any voice the, so uh, it's uh, you can't imagine that by closing a tv channel you will just ignore the other voice. Mm. I, I think we need to be, uh, not, not to be afraid of mm. reflecting this. Because you will uh, have, if you have arguments, valid mm. arguments, that's how you can win you, you the battle. You will convince the world. Uh, absolutely, of absolutely. And because the, the, the image the was, truth. okay, no, they were attacked, mm. they were banned from expressing their views, so they were the victims mm. seen from outside. Mm -hmm. And you needed a little bit not to give them this tool. big, mm. big tool mm. and big argument, in fact. Mm. Mm. So, Doctor, do you believe here that uh, the Western media were misled by uh, the um, uh, situation uh, here, by what they have seen, or it was done intentionally by uh, this, uh, these channels to um, serve certain political purposes. No, again, uh, I, I can't and really and we in general. Absolutely, course, yeah. absolutely. Some media are working according according to their 
proper guidelines mm. and they were reporting and mm. the reporting and we have, of the we, events. We have seen some channels, we don't want to mention here names, but we have seen some channels uh, did show uh, uh, wrong footage or uh, uh, not showing the, the, the truth. And it was many, many of their uh, correspondents and presenters did resign after this. If we talk about Al Jazeera, <laughs> we are. <laughs> it's <laughs> a different case. Mm. I, I think Al Jazeera is a, a, a different case. Mm. It's a special case. And uh, w what I always say, we shouldn't forget that Al Jazeera was backing the Muslim Brotherhood and Al Mahda mm. in Tunisia since 2011, mm. in fact. And not, uh, this is not something new. Mm. They have been always, this, this was their editorial mm. line uh, since 2011. Mm. The, the difference was that 2011, the Muslim mm. Brotherhood were part of the mess. Uh, and suddenly, they were on the other side. And that's mm. how people start to say, OK, no, they are backing on the Muslim Brotherhood. Mm. So uh, Al Jazeera is a different case. Mm. And Al Jazeera, we all know that it's more or less a political arm uh, for uh, Qatar. Mm. And uh, it's, um, it's not only about the coverage of Egypt. Uh, last week, Al Jazeera launched Al Jazeera America uh, mm. in the States. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the, the money put in this channel mm. is huge. Mm -hmm. It's huge. It's, uh, it can't be, uh, you can't compare it with any media, even mm. in the States uh, mm. uh, itself. Uh, what we know, for example, just to buy the frequency, it was $500 million. Mm -hmm. dollars, and we don't know the budget of the station itself. So it's huge money. Uh, and because it's huge money, uh, we know that there is another reason behind, which Launching is this the political. Uh, yeah, it, it's a part of the, the Al Jazeera group. Uh, mm. So you have it now but, in but different. But why now, Doctor? Do you believe that uh, this has any um, link to what's going on on the ground in uh, Egypt and now in Syria as well? Yeah, it's older than this. The, the, the project mm. has been going on for, for a while now. Mm. but. Uh, it's expanding the mm. project, the political project. Mm. Uh, we had Al Jazeera in the Middle East in Arabic, then we had in the Balkans and uh, mm. now the States after Al Jazeera International, mm. which mainly it's, uh, it's one of the main uh, broadcasters, yeah. mm. broadcasters mm. in the world now. Mm. We have to acknowledge this. Okay, Doctor, um, seeing the distorted or distortion uh, of the image of the events taking place here in Egypt, uh, some uh, people, based on individual or personal uh, initiatives, they started to um, go on social media to try to defend uh, what is really going on here in Egypt and to give uh, more or less uh, the right image. Uh, don't you think that the social media now is uh, becoming as important as the mainstream media? Definitely, mm -hmm. it is. It is very, very important. And we see this more and more. It started with the, the Egyptian and the Tunisian revolutions, of course. And then now we are back to see how strong the social media mm. can be. And that's how, uh, and that's why, in fact, uh, what I, I was saying before, that the mainstream media, the traditional media, need really to review its strategy. They can't uh, shut up any voices anymore. So it's much better to include it in your coverage and to mm. try to put it in the right context with the right argument and the right language mm. instead of just ignoring that it mm. exists because it exists and it will find always a way to reach audiences. Mm. This is uh, a very valid point and uh, we, we need really to think of this. The second one is um, even in UK, if the audience is not happy with a coverage, whether it is the BBC or any other media, there is always mechanism to uh, contest and to be heard and the complaints p uh, put on and so on. Mm -hmm. So pressure groups are very, very important. But we need again, and I think it started to mm. be known here in Egypt. And we, we saw some campaigns uh, organized how to put pressure on certain media and how to put pressure on s a certain institutions and organizations in the West. So we need to know a little bit the map of the, mm. uh, the media, the map of uh, different uh, um, decision makers, and how to lobby, and how to be 
again um, uh, a, a group which can have uh, pressure, put pressure on this uh, media and this decision makers. This is very, very, very important. And uh, what we saw uh, during uh, this very short period, that more and more uh, people here in Egypt are trying to do this much better than before. But again, I, I would say it again, this was more or less individuals or mm -hmm. uh, some groups, but there was and still a very big lack of such actions from the government and the authorities. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw only one press conference from uh, Dr. Mustafa Hagezi. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, in such crisis, you need really a, a mm -hmm. better More plan. More frequent, of uh, course. You need a daily one. Mm -hmm. You need a daily appointment with the journalists. They, they, they should go and find the information. You need a daily person uh, available. Daily. Uh, all the time to talk to them. And this has been always a problem with the Egyptian uh, officials, in fact. To get an official voice is always, always very, very difficult. Changing, but not enough. Mm. Dr. Nagla al Amadi, media expert and journalist, uh, it was a pleasure having you with us. Thank this you very much. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. And now, uh, with uh, Dina Yunus, uh, we will have a look at uh, a feature story regarding the ancient Egyptian culture.